So, Johnny, what's this new antibody library all about? Been hearing a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's. Um, I hope it's going to be a very interesting thing. We basically, you know, whenever uh, Jill and, and David Granger um, started talking about the fact that they wanted to do something, um, I was saying, well, let's take a step back and say, if we can do something really novel, something that actually um, genuinely changes uh, things for the better, then that might be really interesting. Because I think we've been, for a lot of us, there's there's been there's been two philosophical camps, right? For a long time, there's been either you're a in uh, an immunization person, or you're a display person, <clears throat> and the two things are very physically different and very kind of scientifically different, right? And um, the problem has always been that, as far as I was concerned, display was an incredibly efficient way of generating really interesting and exciting molecules. But B cells are a really, really good way of making antibodies. <laughs> you know, B cells have always been extremely good at that. And all of our attempts over the years to mimic that or to <clears throat> even bypass that, um, that kind of stochastic process that B cells use to work out from a, from a simple template to a complex collection of residues that that um, do what you need to interact perfectly with the target. So and that yeah. leads into uh, quite nicely into you know so what's new? I mean, I worked on these on the prototype versions of these back in the nineties. What's so different that you know we need another format of antibody library in the world? Exactly. So it's basically about a. Uh, a fundamental change of philosophy, right? Like I said, when we look at what B cells actually do, when we look at what the immune system actually does, it starts from a relatively limited and uh, quite simple focus template, and then it works out from there, right? Um, whereas in library technologies, they've always kind of been regarded as pure chemistry. Right? Yeah. If we can simply build the libraries big enough and put enough diversity in the right positions. Maybe then we can just go and fish, and what we'll get at the end will be a finished fully human antibody. The reality is that's never really been true, right? And uh, you know, for me as much as anyone else, the reality has been that um, we often those first the first molecules we get out of the out of the library are usually just um, proto leads, right? Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of engineering work that needs to be done. They need to be finished off. And then half the time we end up in this game of whack-a-mole where we uh, we change one parameter, affinity, let's say, and we affect another parameter like stability, solubility, etc. And in fact, that goes the whole way back even right to the start of the library. Because we tried to force as much diversity in at the front end, yeah. create these giant libraries, then actually a lot of what we make is in the library is dead space. It's not actually pro properly functional. And when you get it out the other end, a lot of that mutational load is not actually contributing anything to the function of the molecule. It's just there because we had to put it in, in the hope of getting it to do something and in interacting with the target. If we design the process to work the way B cells do it, then we get much closer to the benefits that people have touted for a long time for the humanized animals, right? And so the, the, the big, uh, the big theoretical benefit that people have always touted for the humanized animals, where they have human V genes and they make human antibody diversity in theory. The, the big um, positive thing for them has theoretically been that they go undergo normal B cell maturation. In reality, they don't, but they, got, they, they mostly undergo um, normal ma uh, B cell maturation. And what comes out the other side is in theory, Deselected against the against the repertoire of proteins, the, the proteome in the animal, right? But the reality is that also, as you and I have actually published and proven, is actually not true. Mm -hmm. Those those uh, the, those antibodies from immunized animals are actually simply uh, uh, tolerized to the mouse proteome, and that's even then, it's only if you don't break tolerance through aggressive immunization approaches. So what we by accepting that. 
And by taking all the last 25, 30 years, like you say, of understanding of monoclonals and monoclonal engineering and display and distilling out the bits that we don't like, and pushing in the bits that we that we do like, that's how we end up with the galaxy approach. So, and, and then the, the, the other metaphor I've heard is this glass spleen, mm. um, which implies that there's some sort of, so when you start with a library, you normally end up with, you pull out whatever's in that library. That's right. But it, the, the, a sort of a, a glass spleen suggests that there is um, more evolution to come, because that's really what the B cell does. It means it starts exactly. with something and then it keeps going. Exactly. So how are you keeping on going in, exactly. in the galaxy? Exactly. Well, we're not going to tell people exactly how we do it. <laughs> no, okay. But um, but the nice part is exactly that. What we're doing is saying, okay, B cells start with IgM, IgD, right? <clears throat> Very clean template, essentially germline. And then from there, during the process of evolution of the B cell with repeated contact with antigen, it evolves, like you said. And it doesn't put just hundreds of mutations all over the place. It doesn't add, it just makes specific tweaks in specific positions that are exactly defined to have the outcome that we want. And so that the process that we've built mimics that the whole way through. So the hope is that and the, the early evidence that we have is that from starting from the uh, initial library to the end of the selection and, and the evolutionary process, then we end up with a molecule that looks more like something that was made through a complete B-cell maturation. So what do you think your access to diversity is? I mean, you you know, uh, it rapidly ends up, you know, e you know, the available diversity equaling the number of atoms in the universe type of, of calculation. So mm -hmm. what, what's your available diversity in this galaxy approach versus, you know, what's gone before? Well, actually, it already starts with enormous diversity in the front end. It's just that that diversity is, is extremely focused in its positioning. And then the it's the actually the addition of diversity via the maturation process during the selection program that then massively hyper diversifies everything that comes up. And what, what do you reckon just, I mean, I'm not going to ask you how you do it, but, but in terms of what is the outcome of what you've done, you know, what's the, what's your estimate of the, you know, increase in, in access to diversity? Oh yeah. I mean, it's, diversity. It's, I it's, yeah, the, the increase in useful, I mean, the starting library diversity is already greater than 10 to the 10, yeah. right? But then many, many, many billions fold increase is, is added mathematically by all of the potential mutations that you add as you go along. Okay, so so you know in the in the, in true Midwest fashion, you know, don't tell me, show me. What what have you actually uh, what have you actually done with it um, to give you the confidence that it can be applied? Well, we've been talking about that about the fact that <laughs> whenever you make bold statements that you're gonna you know, yeah yeah back them up <laughs> yeah when you're gonna tear something apart and go back down to, 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 to base principles and question some of the fundamentals of the way some of the things have been done, um, you, you, you run the risk of being wrong, right? <laughs> so the very first thing we did, we, we basically didn't tell anyone about this until right now, because having already built it several months ago, you know, we uh, we said, right, we've really got to prove that this works now. It can't just look, look nice in, on, yeah. on paper. And so we um, we did two things. One, we uh, went through um, multi orthodox sel uh, selection runs um, on two different targets. Um, key interesting targets generated lots of hits, um, and um, uh, made sure that those were they they fitted all the principles that we've defined, that they were potent, that they were selective, and that they're um, extremely. Um, uh, they look like they're extremely high quality developable molecules. And also the exciting secondary point about the library design was immediately we got what we're calling instant bispecifics. So the two targets were chosen to have the potential that as soon as you select, you get out the other end and you can make a, an immediate bispecific. Um, that doesn't mean that we've grossly limited the diversity at the front end. It just means that at the back end, we have a 
really great system for being able to identify immediate by specifics. So that whenever you screen these two pools, you immediately find lots of bispecific partners and you can immediately make um, fully human finished uh, bispecific antibodies um, without having to go through a whole lot of um, secondary engineering. And how will, do you envisage using this? I, I saw that there was, um, uh, you know, it's very uh, pleasing to see that this isn't, uh, you know, this is going to be made available to to all. That's uh, right. Uh, and that it's more, the better model is fee for service as opposed to um, That's know, right. trying to get milestones and royalties down the line, which will, which will kill it. Um, quite on That's right. There's no, sign up yeah, no, there's there's no licensing, yeah, and there's no there's there's no requirement for people to pay punitive downstream fees. Um, uh, the uh, it's a, an immediate first come first serve fee for service. Just come along, chat to RX Biologics, yeah. and off we go. And and uh, so RX Biologics will operate the 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 process if you like, and then deliver the. Final outcome or, or what? It's straight straight fee for service. Okay, so no royalties, no licensed. milestones. Uh, a single milestone at um, first in human. Right, is, is what's being proposed. And um, other than that, it's straight fee for service. Okay, you just contact so us. You, okay, and you go. So if you, if you get success, then it's great. Um, Correct. But actually, you're taking the risk that you will come up with a with a candidate. Exactly. Yeah, which is absolutely right. And put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, that's it. And and what about um, when multiple people? You know, you know how it works, Johnny. That that, that all of a sudden one target will get super hot, <laughs> and the world <laughs> and his brother um, wants wants access to the targets. Have you have you thought how you um, uh, you manage that one, or is it straightforward? Yes, there's no there's no there's no gatekeeping on who can work on what target. Yeah. It's first come, first served, and the uh, everyone who generates unique hits from the library or from anything else that we're doing, because the, the the group can also do, of course, immune libraries, VHHs, all sorts of other stuff. Yeah. Um, if they can, um, um, basically all hits that are in a unique, that are unique in a um, in a uh, selection campaign or a screening campaign for any individual um, customer. They get those. It's as simple as yeah. that. Yeah, I, honestly, I, I I would fully endorse that. I mean, having done these things with gatekeeping, it just yeah, loses the will to live. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nightmare, and it's a frustration on both sides. It's a, it's a frustration for the people trying to do the gatekeeping, and it's a frustration for anyone who gets get 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 kept. Yeah, <laughs> has the Whatever. gate slammed in their it's face. Just a word, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's no it's no good for 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 anybody on either side. Agreed. Agreed. And so, um, uh, just thinking forward now. So, if somebody's got, you know, a target, a handful of targets that they want to prosecute now, are that, is is is, a, is the engine warmed up and ready to go? Ready to go. Fully fully available. That's it. Just call. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I look forward to seeing seeing and hearing more about this, Johnny. I hope you will. Thanks a lot.